Hello everybody, this is Derek Cooper with BHO Ministries. Uh, I'm really excited to do this video today. Uh, it's something that's really, um, really big uh, on the Lord's heart in terms of priority, priority in the spirit. That's really what I was feeling today as I was meditating uh, this morning about what the Lord wanted me to speak on today. And actually, I know that this is important because the Lord gave me the inspiration for this video while I was preparing another message. So whenever he does that, I find that there is a succession and there's a sense of timing that he's trying to uh, uh, ca capture. There's a there's a an urgency in the spirit of the Lord uh, for the information involved. Uh, like I said in the last video, I talked about God being a God of tremendous love, a God that is extremely a fierce lover is the is the is the uh, or was the the description that I, I, I the Lord gave me uh, to express in the spirit in terms of the way that he loves. So, again, this video is going to be about uh, manifesting the love of God, which is the focus of this ministry. And this video, I pray, will be a video that will help equip uh, those of us that are believers and also bring unbelievers into the knowledge of the truth of the Bible uh, and how to truly utilize the gifts and graces the Lord has extravagantly uh, dispensed upon the children of men. So with that, I'm going to begin by talking about this. Uh, I've done about, I think, 15 videos at this point. Um, and out of those 15 or 16 videos, I think 12 or 13 of them were like more uh, rooted in, in talks like this. I did a couple of videos where I was in the forest. I did a video where I talked about some events that happened in my life and testimonies. But for the most part, when it came to dealing with doctrine, dealing with biblical principles, there is about 12 or 13 of them. And also the expose series too. Um, but this video is extremely important because doctrine is really important. Doctrine is something that's uh, foundational in our progressive belief and uh, our progressive relationship with God. It's, it's, it's something that cannot be cast away. Doctrine is something, it's like, the, like if you build a house, the foundation of that house is, is probably the most important aspect of that house because that's what is going to keep the house the whole of the rest of the house standing. We know that an iceberg, when an iceberg, I think they say maybe 10 to 20% of the iceberg is above water. The foundation, the, the, the depth, the most important or the, the structure of that iceberg is hidden underneath the water and it's not visible to the naked eye. Well, that's the same with the foundation. The foundation is extremely strong in a house, but you don't really see the foundation. It's there. It's underground. But that foundation is the structure, is the strength that's holding that house together with wind and storms and tornadoes and all. Well, you know, uh, a house isn't going to stand without a solid foundation when it comes against adversity, weather and th certain things. Uh, so we need a foundation. There's a scripture that talks about this. The Bible talks about houses that are built on sand. And when the floods came and the winds blew, it fell. And houses are built on this. But when you build a house on a rock, when it has a sure foundation, and we know what the rock is, is Jesus Christ. When we have that, we know that we will be able to withstand uh, in the day of adversity. So with that, we have, I'm going to talk about a subject that's extremely taboo, I guess you would say, especially in the church at large. It's something that people, you know, it's either the people that subscribe to it, uh, this principle, a lot of times, it really depends. Some of them go head on into it. Some of them are timid. Even within the church, 
uh, that believes in this biblical truth that I'm going to present today, there still is some at times there's a sense of timidity in terms of how it's dealt with, how it's utilized and all of that. So I understand that this is a very sensitive subject within Christendom. But like I said before, I'm not here to give my opinion. I'm not here to start some fleshly movement. I'm here to or some idea. I'm 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 this ministry is going to be based on the word of God, period. I'm not. I pray by the grace of God that nothing ever comes out of my mouth. I pray that it's not rooted in the word of God. And and if and I challenge if if I'm ever if someone ever if I fall short in some way or something's not biblical, if, if it's if 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 it's done with wisdom and it's done in the right spirit, and if someone comes to me to give me information to to clarify or to help. My walk and my understanding, man, please, let's bring it, bring it out. Let's let's talk. The Bible says, come, let us reason together. Now, I'm not talking about debating and stuff. I'm talking about work, the word of God and biblical principles, you know. So anyway, I just want to throw that out. So uh, in some of the videos that I've done, there have been moments where the Holy Spirit came in into the manifest presence. Uh, his, he manifested his presence in the room and I found myself being caught away and I began to speak with other tongues. So this video is going to be about tongues. The truth of what the Bible says about speaking in tongues. Is it biblical? Is it something that we need to do as believers? Is it godly? Is it something that's of the devil? Is it something that's wrong? Is it right? Can it be a hindrance? Is it a barrier? Is it something that should be encouraged? Is there, there's a, it, what's the time? What's the place for it? There, we're going to really, I'm going to try to systematically delve into this issue from a biblical perspective and give you the biblical foundation and the principles that are present within the text to truly bring truth to this subject so that we cannot be confused, deceived, fearful, the whole night. We, we, we really want to go at truth. There are a lot of denominations that don't believe in the manifest presence, in the manifestations of the spirit in this day and time. So what I'm going to do by the grace of God today, I'm going to present biblical truth on the foundation of the word that is Jesus Christ to bring clarity, understanding, and revelation in terms of the truth of this manifest gift that God has given to believers. Okay, so we're going to go into prayer right now. Father, in the mighty, matchless, magnificent name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name, that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that you are Lord. Lord Jesus, and we, I'm your servant, Lord God, and I want to reveal you to your people as best as I possibly can by the help of your spirit. I'm insufficient, as I talked about in the last video, to do this on my own. Obviously, I'm just a man. David said, what is man that you are mindful of them, What that you consider them, you made them a little lower than the angels. I know that I'm insufficient to uh, properly reveal your truths without your help, God. So I solicit heaven. I solicit your heavenly angels to come, your messengers uh, to come, oh God, and to ignite my spirit. Give me the insight that I need in order to present this not in love, oh God. This is a very serious subject, oh God. And the devil has strategically uh, gone into the church over the ages to stop the importance of being able to effectively pray and walk in the spirit and to utilize the gifts and powers that you have given us through the Holy Ghost. And he wants to stop us from using it effectively. And we refuse because it is your will that we walk in victory, Lord Jesus. So we are going to delve into this with your grace and mercy and help. And we will bring light. We will bring understanding and we break every spiritual the spirit of confusion. We break the spirit of deception. We break the spirit of barriers. 
oh God, in mental blockages and strongholds and deep-rooted generational doctrines of devils that prevent people from effectively walking in your word. Lord, we break this in Jesus' name. We go in a little warfare because I feel it in my spirit. The Holy Ghost is here. He showed me it was going to be like this. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, you are worthy. We break it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're going to get into this. Let's do it. All right. So first, we're going to start off with an understanding of why of the infilling of the Holy Spirit and what it really is. Hallelujah. When Adam was in the garden, the Bible says that he breathed into him. Breath, nephesh, the spirit of God, the breath of life. The, we see in Genesis the spirit of God moving upon the faces of the waters in creation. We see that there is a, a interconnected, intimate uh, relationship where the spirit is working and creating and manifesting its presence in the eternal realms and in the realm that we live in in time. We see this present in the Bible. Hallelujah. We see the word of man being powerful in the world. We see that Jesus had Adam name the animals. God had him name the animals. He spoke a word and said, zebra, you know, pig, uh, uh, elephant, whatever. We see this. Okay. When we see that he even named you shall be called woman because you have come from man. We see that there's something about utterance. There is a power. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We see the power of the spoken word of God. The Bible says by his word. Man, I'm sorry. I mean, this is by his word, he spoke and existence came. It's something about the spoken word of God. His power is encapsulated in his word. Jesus Christ was the living word. There's a song by Fred Hammond. You are the living word. It's the truth, y'all. So we're going to get into this. So we see that, that there is something about the word that is present in creation, there is present in God. There is a weight. There's a gravity, a gravitas. There's a, there's a, a powerful manifestation of the pop of the word. So let's move into this. When we look at the different Hebrew uh, or the different heroes of faith, we hear that it was something about them believing and catching on to the word of God. When, when, the, when Jesus spoke his word, the Bible says his word never returns unto him void. Abraham, he believed the word of the Lord. Whose report shall you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord, the word of the Lord. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Even his name, the spoken word, the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow at the name. It's something about. So I know I'm, 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 I'm really you know, nailing this home, but I want to, to show that there is a biblical through line throughout the, the Bible that, that speaks to the power of the spoken word. So now we're going to move into this, the Tower of Babel. We know that in the Tower of Babel, that that was in the Old Testament, Right. And we're going to we're going to touch on that again later to really bring a through line to the present day when it comes to the spoken word and tongues and things. We see that with the Tower of Babel that Satan sought to build his own government on earth. We see that he he sought to rule as king. He, we see that he began to use the children of men as a means to set up his kingdom and rebel against the Most High God in principle and in government. And we see that there was an intervention that happened where God 
established his authority on earth and his godliness and stopped the work of the devil. The Bible said Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. So we see that God, Elohim, Yahweh, El Shaddai, we see that he came down. The Bible says he came down to see what was going on in Babel. When he came down, he saw that the people were on one accord, right? They were of one language, right? And we see that they had, there was a power that manifested in their ability to communicate seamlessly because they had one language. And he said, nothing will be um, withheld from them because they were in unity. They had one, they had a one track mind to carry out this, this exaltation of self. The same thing the devil did in Ezekiel. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'll be like the most high. So we see that he was trying to manifest that on the earth, but Jesus came down and said, no, 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 no. We ain't going to do that. I'm going to intervene out of mercy and grace. What did he do? He confounded the languages. That's how we got all the languages that we have today. Humans aren't that smart. We didn't create this stuff. We got it from God. God did that as an act of mercy to stop satanic infiltration into the children of man to exalt itself above God and bring down a the judgment that God had to, would have had to make out of his righteousness. He cut it off before it got too crazy. When the evil got too crazy, he had to he, he stopped it. And what did he do? He confounded the languages. The spoken word of men to confuse. And what that did was it confused the devil. It stopped his work. The word of God, the power of that word, they couldn't even do it. They scattered. That's how, that's how everybody spread out in the world was because of God taking control of the tongue of mankind. So you probably already see where I'm going with this. In James... The Bible talks about the, the tongue, that the tongue is the most difficult thing to tame. You can tame a lion. You know, I, I don't mean this in a crazy way. You can tame your children. I know that sounds crazy. I don't mean it in that. I'm not like they're animals. I'm saying you can you can bring a sense of control when they're in a stage of development is what I'm trying to say. You can tame your appetite. Some of us can, so, you know, you can do so many things. You can tame your, you know, some people can tame, you know, whatever. I'm not going to, but it, there, you can tame, you can control things is what, I guess what I'm trying to say. But the hardest thing to control, the Bible makes it very clear, is the tongue. It's a very, it's, it's unruly, I believe the Bible says. So it's interesting that God, Showing his sovereignty, showing his power that he sought to show his ownership. We see in Acts. Okay, so we have, now we're going to go to the New Testament. He showed his ownership and his, his sovereign godliness over all of the mankind and creation by confounding the languages. And we see it again on the day of Pentecost in Acts. We see it in the Old Testament. We see it in the New Testament. So Jesus Christ, the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. I know I repeated that, but yes. So he's the same. He don't change. He's a, he did. He was. He was. Con, he was taming the tongue in the Old Testament, and he was taming the tongue in the New Testament on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and suddenly it appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon it each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We see also in the book of Acts with a centurion who was a follower of Jesus Christ to show you that there was there's an empowerment that happens with tongues. There's a there is a manifestation that happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon a person. Now I'm gonna, I'm going to I'm going to bring something else home. Some people may say, "Well, you don't have to speak in tongues." Well, 
I put it like this. The Holy Spirit can work in a person's life in a multitude of ways. We see in the Old Testament, the Bible talks about Jesus Christ. After he died, they had to wait for the spirit to come and manifest itself in a, in a way that a dwelling that was able to happen by Jesus Christ sacrificing his life and killing the, the flesh by being buried in Christ. We're, we're going to do a, a video about baptism probably today. But anyway, uh, when he died, he and it's, it's so much revelation is because even just the flesh and the tabernacle and and and, and just the ID circumcision. It's, there's a lot of stuff. The, there's so much revelation packed into the Bible. It's, it's eternal. It's amazing. But anyway, when he died, he when he ascended on high, it opened up the the channel, I guess, for lack of a better term, for the Holy Spirit to come and literally inhabit mankind before then the holy spirit didn't inhabit mankind and they actually dwell inside of their body because jesus christ hadn't been glorified in that way yet it hadn't manifested on the earth now he was slain from the foundation of the earth so we see that there were times when he could tame the mouth and 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 do things and the Holy Spirit would come upon people and they would speak and prophesy and do things. But they, but there was a, the, the Holy Spirit came upon people. If you see that the, the Old Testament often says that God, God was with this person. God was with this person. But see, there was a difference where God literally made his spirit take residence in people when Jesus ascended. That's why he says, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Okay, so out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So, and we know water is often a, a, a symbol of the spirit, okay? And I, I don't know, I just went all into that. But the point I'm trying to make with that is that the Holy Spirit manifested itself. In the form of taking ownership of mankind, of ownership of human beings. And the vehicle by which he did that was through taming of the tongue. And, and supernaturally, just like in the Tower of Babel, he supernaturally gave a heavenly language. In the, Tower, in the Old Testament, they spoke earthly languages. In the New Testament, because it's spirit and life, the, believe, the people spoke spiritual languages. Paul said, though I speak in the tongues of angels. Bible said, Paul said he spoke in tongues more than all of them when he was talking to the different churches that he was founding and sending his letters. The Bible says, pray in the spirit, walk in the spirit that you won't fulfill the lust in the flesh. He says, when you don't know what to say in prayer, the Holy Spirit intercedes with groanings and, 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 and moanings that can't be uttered, meaning that he can, the Holy Spirit seeks the, in, the inward man and reveals things and truths that we can't even utter ourselves or our, with our minds consciously. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. So I'm really doing this to paint a picture of the value of the Holy Spirit in the spoken word, in the link between the spirit man and the spoken word. The Bible says that when the people speak in tongues, they speak mysteries. Only you and God, only your spirit man and God know what's going on when you speak in tongues. You may be talking, you may be praying for somebody in Africa. You may be praying about an issue that's going to happen six months from now. You may be praying for your future wife or husband. You may be praying for uh, the your your child that you're going to have in 15 years. Uh, they're three now, but they're going to go to college one day or something. And you're praying that they get a scout. You don't, it's mysteries. You don't know. You could be praying uh, for the assignment of an angel that's in the sky and, and releasing that word so they can do their bidding. There are multiple, you, you, God is, man, the God, God is, is huge, y'all. That's what I'm trying to get at. And his spirit 
is all knowing is another thing I'm trying to get at. All knowing. That's why this is so important that people understand. That's why the devil doesn't want people speaking in tongues because it's so powerful, man. He and he can't understand it. Just he doesn't understand heavenly language. When you, when you speak in tongues, it scatters the enemy. It scares him because he knows that the power of the tongue and he knows all the utterances that are going out into the spirit realm. And he's like, man, I don't know what's happening. All these plans and and the Lord saying stuff and this guy he uses him. It confuses the devil. It confounds him, man. He can't handle it. That's why he's he's tried so much throughout the ages to stop this spiritual power. The Bible, Paul talks about the gift of tongues that it builds you up spiritually. It does something to you. It enlivens you. It quickens your spirit. It, it strengthens you. I really see why the Lord had me talk about this because it's, it's so it's so important, it's powerful, and it's a foundational prim principle. And some people say, "Well, I know," and a lot of increasing people, "Well, it's not for today." Uh, you know, that was for the the days of Acts and when the church was being founded. Well, I don't know. The Bible says Jesus Christ the same today, yesterday, and forever. And as far as I know, you said it's, it's because they were starting churches. As far as I know, there's churches being started every day, probably. Ministries being started. By the Lord. You're looking at one. This is the ministry that the Lord started right here. Why wouldn't he? Why would he just decide, I'm going to stop doing it? Now, we know that the Lord does reveal himself and manifest himself in different ways over in different dispensations. But we're in the dispensation where tongues was manifest. We're still in the dispensation of grace. We're not in a, another dispensation yet. We're still in the same dispensation. Why would we think that the manifest power of God would not be present on this earth? Why? It doesn't make sense, man. It doesn't make sense. We have to realize we have to utilize the gifts that God has given us. We cannot be ignorant. The devil, there is nothing he wants more than to stop you from 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 uh, speaking in a heavenly language. Man, that. that that's that's his that's one of his that's one of his nightmares as someone that prays in tongues a lot because he knows the type of how powerful it is. It's in us. I know I said Psalm ninety one is, is is an atomic bomb. I call it the atomic psalm. But speaking in tongues, man, I, there is no value that can be put on speaking in other tongues because it does so much. You don't even. There are things you could be praying for to that are. I mean, extremely important to your walk and the walk of others and the, and the gospel being presented to the world and the will of God being accomplished on this earth. It, it, it's tied to the spoken word, y'all. I promise you it is. These, this is biblical stuff, and I'm excited. When I, do, when I finish this video, I'm going to... I'm going to talk about the centurion in a minute, too. When I... Uh, finish this video i'm gonna put a a a page like i guess an ending page or whatever where i'm gonna I'll, i plan to by the grace of god put all the different scriptures where tongues are mentioned in the bible so that we can see that it's not i'm not talking about i'm not theorizing here i'm not this is not a a an opinion this is the word of god the authoritative truth of god man this is not a joke this is not you know, uh, some like theolo the theological or theological hypothesis. You know, this isn't this is this is truth, man. Unadulterated truth. So let's get it. All right. So I want to talk about the centurion real quick because this is really interesting. In the book of Acts, well, first off, I'm going to start off by saying this. The promise of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says in Acts that it's for you and all of your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So the Lord was telling us, the Holy Spirit was telling us that the promise of the comforter, the Holy Spirit taking residence in the children of man was something that was for everyone who would believe and take hold of that promise. It's for everybody. It's not exclusive. It's not just a gift that only some people get. Like some, that's another thing. Some people think, well, well, the gift is tongue. It's only for certain people, and you have to just like all the other gifts. No, this is speaking in tongues is for everybody, man. I'm gonna show you that it's for everybody. The centurion, and the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. 
and began to speak with other tongues the spirit gave the mother. And so if it was just a gift, don't you think maybe he made out of the, I don't know how many people were in there. The book of, I think that it was, it was, a, it was like a, over a hundred some people. I think it was like 120 people that were there seeking the Holy Spirit. All 120 of them spoke in tongues. All 120. Well, if you think it was just a gift for some, wouldn't just like 40 of them do it or like 10 or 70? Every single one of them did it. The Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Not some utterance. The Bible's clear, man. He don't. The Lord, Bible is literal, man. I don't. I don't. I don't know how to, how to, how to, how to express this. We can't just decide and pick and choose what we want to believe and what we don't. What we want to adhere to. What we don't. God is total. In, as this, the man that I, the the the. Uh, one of the, the 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 man of God that's over me that I consider my spiritual authority. Uh, he says he's total in his totality. He's complete in his completeness. Uh, something like that he says. So God, you, you can't take part of him. You take all of him or nothing, man. He's a, like I said in the other video, he's a fierce lover and he, he wants all of you and he's going to give us all of him. That's just the way he rolls and he's infinite. So we'll be look, gaining him forever. You know, I'm giving a little sip of this. I'm sorry. But yeah, man, it's the truth, man. The truth will make you free, man. Man, the devil hates when you speak in tongues. I promise you. Sometimes I'll be praying, interceding, man, and I can feel them be like, man, here we go again. So I'm like, I can tell they're thinking that. Like, I can sense it. They be like, oh, my God. You know, because they, it's like, they don't know what I'm talking about. It's, 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 it's frightening. He, he can think he's in a power position and all of a sudden I start speaking in tongues and like eight angels can just come and just shackle him at any second. He knows that can happen because he'll, I could be asking the Lord to send angels. He don't know what's happening. He don't know if I'm praying for somebody in, in Germany. It, it, com it totally confuses his whole deal. Like he gets, he gets, he's a, dude, he, the, the devil hates people that speak in tongues regularly. He hates it. I promise you he hates it. I promise you I can feel it. When I'm praying, I'm like, man, they, they hate that. Because the spirits, they stand back anyway. When you start walking in the light, the Lord, they can't comprehend the light, man. They sit back. I can sometimes I can I'm I the Lord be giving me discernment sometimes. I just be knowing stuff. Man, they 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 can't even come too close to you, man. I promise you. They, when you get when the Holy Spirit, the fire, when you catch on fire, man, them demons, they be like standing back, they'll sit back and watch you because they can't get too close because they get burned, man. They can't handle it. They can't handle it, man. So they just sit back from afar. And you start speaking in tongues. They be like, ah, oh, shoot. Uh, they just leave, man. The Bible says they flee. Resist the devil. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He's going to flee. Man, this is this is life. This is the spirit, man. I promise you it is. I'm not playing, man. This isn't a game. I'm, I, I, this is not fairy tale video game stuff. Uh, you know, this is the real deal holy field. I hate saying that, but yeah. You know, so I know I'm rowdy again today, but this is the spirit, man. This is the spirit just got me like this. I've been putting emphasis on it because I mean, I'm speaking with authority I like this because it's the Holy Ghost. This is not wisdom of man. This is not something I re I did read it in the Bible. It's the word of God, but it's living. The Bible says the word of God is living, man. It's the living word, you know. Lively stone. Jesus is alive. He's alive. Yeah, I mean, and he's always speaking. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God continues to proceed. That's what proceedeth means. Let's keep going, y'all. Where am I at? And I was going to talk about this, but I didn't really get a chance to delve into this i've heard this idea but people people think oh it's just it's just babble man they speak they saying it. man when you speak in tongues you saying something i promise you i can tell man boy and sometimes i know what i'm saying i know what i'm talking about the lord will give me understanding about what i'm praying about i'll be like what i'm serious man he'll do it and it's a language it ain't no a uh, uh, baby talk babble babble man when you really start speaking in tongues you start speaking in tongues man and you know it's not you. It's your spirit man speaking. 
Man, I'm telling you, y'all. I'm telling you. Tongues of fire, man. I already talked about that. Okay. Now, and I will say this. Now, I'm gonna, I got to say this too. The devil does have his counterfeit. Everything that, I said this in other videos. Everything God does, the devil tries to, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. He has his version of it. His demonic, evil, twisted, rebellious version of the same thing. That, cause he, I, again, this is something I often say. The devil can't create stuff. He's not a creator. He's created. Okay, so, and he failed. He rebelled and he messed up his whole situation because he was, he, in his heart, became evil, wicked. So, he just twists the things that God has made to fit his own demonic devices. That's just the way he's evil ways. He just twists stuff. So I really want to nail, drive that home. Uh, and one of the ways he had, he, now in the occult, they have demonic tongues. They, everything, they have demonic healings. They have demonic wisdom. They have demonic prop. They have those things too. So it is true. The devil has his tongues too. Okay. And. I'm going to talk about this. So I want to let you know that this one is twisted. Now, in the church, that's why we have to learn to test the spirits and see if, them, see if they're on, of God. I'll give you an example. There was a woman that I, she's passed away now, but she was a very, very strong man of God. I talked about her in another video. She wrote a book called He Came to Set the Captives Free. She passed away in, excuse me, in 2020. She was a woman that was very, very much in deliverance ministry. She and and one of the uh one testimony she talked about was there was a woman that went, she was a Christian. And she went to a ministry or like a convention or, or, or a revival or something and or a crusade. And there was a minister that was there and he came and was asking, does anyone uh, uh, get the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues or get a, you know, speak in tongues? Maybe he just said and she came down and she he laid his hands on her and she began to speak in tongues and she thought she was speaking in the spirit of the Holy Ghost from the, from Acts, right? And she was very happy and joyous when she left. She thought she had received the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. She was just, you know, ecstatic about this. But she noticed that ever since that day, weird, bad things started happening. For instance, she started, her prayer life began to suffer. She felt forced to speak in tongues like she'd be trying to pray in English and she couldn't she could only speak in tongues I think she was saying and 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 it and she had other manifestations that were contrary in her life to the word of God you know maybe uh she was being more tempted to sin there was darkness maybe she became depressed it, I don't really remember all the details but she talked about this thing and one of the things she didn't do is she didn't test the spirit to see if it was of God. And you know things by their fruit. There was something she did, or maybe the Lord wanted to teach her. So I don't know what exactly, what it was a deception of the devil, and she got intertwined with the spirit, a contrary spirit. The reason why I said that is because there are ways that you can test a spirit. I mean, finish this story. So, she came, she had heard about this lady, this minister, and she came to get deliverance from this. She realized, the Lord revealed to her that it was something uh, going on, the minister with her. And speaking in tongues, when she counseled her and talked about her spiritual life, he talked about that this these issues started happening when she left this crusade and had been there ever since. And so the woman of God, said, can you speak in tongues whenever you want? She was like, yeah, anytime I want to. She was like, I want you to speak in tongues right now. And she says, no matter what I say, no matter what I do, I want you to continue speaking in tongues, right? 
So she says, okay. So she started speaking in tongues. And then the woman said, you spirit, you contrary spirit, that Jesus Christ come in the flesh from heaven, that he lived for 33 days on this earth, was he crucified on the cross, died and raised again on the third day and now sits at the right hand of the father. Is that the G that spirit that came and quickened Jesus and raised him from the dead? Is that the spirit speaking right now through this woman? And as soon as she said that, the woman started cussing, speaking profanities and cursing God. So I said all that to say this, the devil counterfeited that. And there was an evil spirit, a wicked spirit that came into this woman and did that. She got delivered. And after she got delivered, her life, her life came back and she had a greater intimacy and a, and a, and a beautiful relationship with God. She was restored 50 fold or whatever. The Lord tremendously blessed her after she humbled herself and got that deliverance. So, and it taught her a lesson about being, not being just a seeking people and, and whatever she was maybe she was worshiping some this guy or idolized this person and or or she she allowed truth that was presented to her she may have denied the truth and she and she through her own lusts went a contrary way so the point i'm trying to make here is this we have to test spirits though this is biblical, but the devil always comes with his counterfeit. Don't people can speak over your life and Kurt, say things, false things. We have to be on the defense also from the devil and wickedness. So you don't just go gung up, but what you do is you 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 pray, you ask the Lord Jesus Christ, you see God, you come humbly, you be watchful and vigilant, and you seek the Holy Spirit. You seek, and the God has given us a foolproof way to make sure. That we are, are we, that we test the spirits. The Bible says, if if any spirit that does not that does not deny that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, was crucified on the third day, rose again by the power of the Holy Spirit, and now sits at the right hand of the Father, any spirit that denies that is not the Spirit of God. So you, we can test the spirits, okay? And that's another thing. A lot of people in the church they're afraid. Man, that's of the devil to speak in tongues. Well, it can be if it's if the devil if you're using a counterfeit. Just like anything, just like any spiritual manifestation. That's another thing. Every spiritual manifestation is not of God. Let me, let me show you something. The deception. The devil tried to trick me, man, big time. Man, one time, man, when I first, you know, I, when I was in that spiritual boot camp phase I was in, I would be sleeping and I'd be prayer and communion with God. But sometimes while I was asleep, I started having these like weird sensations and feelings and on my flesh and body and all this it was manifestation it was spirit it was spiritual man i would feel presence standing over me and i was like man like what is this and the devil was trying to do a few things number one he was trying to get me dependent upon sensation and manifestation he wanted me to become to stay in the flesh and not walk in the spirit. He was trying to get me uh, addicted to sensations and feelings. And then he was also trying to pump me up with pride to think, man, when I go to sleep, I'm feeling all this stuff and these must be angels walking through me and all this type of stuff. This is great. And I would just have these things and I was almost like welcoming these sensations and feelings and, and looking forward to them and all this stuff well and don't get so and don't get me wrong the lord does give you physical manifestation you feel his presence i mean if i if i go a certain amount of time without feeling his presence man i start man what's going on lord help now sometimes he'll put you in the wilderness and you won't he'll intentionally like withdraw your his your ability to necessarily sense him, but he's doing that to to give you faith, to teach you the ways of faith, believing without seeing and not relying on on the flesh and, and emotion and stuff. He's refining you sometimes when that happens. The, there's a there's a great man of God that says you got to trust God even when you can't trace him, and that's very true. Start saying prayers like this when you feel I, this this will touch the Lord. Man, I used to do this. I'd be praying sometimes in the beginning. And I wouldn't feel nothing. 
But I'll be like, God, I don't even want you to don't don't let me feel. I don't want to feel you because I got I know you're here. I don't need you to make me feel something. I trust that you're here anyway. So I'm going to keep praying because I know you're God and I don't I'm not dependent on a feeling. I got faith in you because I know you're, you're right here listening to everything I say. Talk to God like that. I get man. It'll touch his heart, man. I promise you it will. Please, man, this dude got some faith in me. I'm telling I mean, and be sincere, mean it. You know, I tell him, Lord, don't even do it. Don't even touch. I don't need to feel nothing. I'm touching you. Tell him that. Lord likes stuff like that because that's faith, man. Faith without works is dead. All right. So let's 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 do that. So anyway, the devil was trying to deceive me, man. And get me all into sensations and feelings and emotions and all this type of stuff. And I'm thinking I'm having these blessed moments, <laughs> you know, and I was reading a really amazing book. And you know what? I'm going to recommend this book. I believe, Lord, is it okay? Yes. Watchman Nee. It's a book called The Spiritual Man by Watchman Nee. I, I've read probably 90% of this book. I still have a, like, maybe... It's a thick book, y'all. I mean, it ain't no little book, okay? But it's a really good book. Read it prayerfully. Read it with the word of God. Uh, don't get caught up in it. Don't make it a case study. Don't make this book, because this book is heavy. There's so much revelation in this book. You have to just, first time, if you read this, just read it straight through. Don't do too much, because it'll get you caught up in thinking. And it's so much truth and revelation that you'll think, this is a manual. Like, the Bible is the manual, man. That's why I don't really, I'm not into recommending too many books because don't get caught up in reading books. I, I, the Lord didn't have me really reading books until I was deep, like, until he had, he pounced, until this word, man, I, I love the word of God, man. Like, that's my thing. I, I can't even read, I have, man, I don't even now, I, I was reading books like a few months ago, but now, man, I don't even, I don't even remember the last time, I think I read. I don't really, I've been in a phase now, I've just been on the word, man, listening to the word, reading the word, referencing the word, but mostly I've been, lately I've been listening to it because I've been busy doing stuff, so I like to just hear and meditate on the word so it can get in my spirit, but anyway, 47 minutes is, you know, so I said all that to say this, where was I at? I was talking about uh, the devil, yeah, manipulating. So the devil was doing that. And then the Lord through this book and also the Lord was speaking to me in prayer and moving me away from dependence on sensation and feeling and showing me the devil was trying to get me to walk in the flesh by doing that. He wanted to keep me into sensation and what I can touch and feel and see. You know, that was what he was trying to do. It was a tactic. And the, and the Lord exposed it. And I promise you, it was crazy. I was having all these manifestations. The moment I got the revelation of it, the Lord showed me the truth of what the, the, what the devil was doing. He hasn't done it since. <laughs> it just stopped. Because he was like, that ain't working no more. Because he knows the truth. The truth will make you free. He hasn't done it. I, the, the, the devil ain't trying to give me no crazy sensation other than an attack that he was. I when Now when he attacks, he don't. I mean, he still do it, but when it comes to sensation and stuff, he typically don't come like as an angel of light. He comes like I he, he I know it's the devil when he comes now and does physical stuff. Like I know it's the devil. His I feel the presence. He don't really come with physical sensations as an angel of light anymore. Thank God, because now I learn. I, the Lord has given me grace to learn how to know how to test the spirit and know if it's of God. Now I know. How the spirit, man, I'm going to do a video on this because when the Lord started to reveal to me the interaction between the soul, mind and spirit, crucifying the flesh. See, a lot of times the Lord doesn't manifest certain spiritual things in our lives because he knows that our soul isn't crucified enough to be able to discern and handle them and deal with them in a way that's responsible. So he won't allow it to happen because we're not ready for it. You know, he had to. And he is going to continue to do it throughout my life to refine my mind, will, and emotions and my soul so that I can handle uh, spiritual things in, uh, in a more heavy basis, I guess you would say. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So, 
again, I didn't say all that to get scared of tongues. Don't fear it. I'm, I'm telling you just so you can be aware that the devil does have his counterfeit. Okay. And you need to read in the Bible. The Lord knows your heart, man. He knows if you're really trying to seek him and he knows if you're doing it for any other reason, seek the Lord, test the spirits, repent, walk in righteousness, read the word, get full of the word. And the Bible says, if you, if you, if you start speaking in tongues ever, and it feels forced, like you feel like if there's a heaviness to it, if you're, if something is taking control of your mouth, like in a way that feels like invasive. See, one thing about God, he never is invade. That's how you know if something is of the devil, because it, it, it shocks your being. It's invasive. Like it's harsh. The devil can't really be too soft. Like the Lord, the Bible says his yoke is easy and his burdens are light. He's gentle. Like the Holy Spirit is gentle. It, sometimes it can be powerful and, and overtake you, but it's still not, you never feel violated. Never. The Lord has never, ever manifested himself in a way to me where I felt violated. Not once. The devil, that's all he does. He's into that violation. And look at it, it's in the flesh. Rape and murder and enforcing his will on people and all this stuff. That's the way the devil, that's the way of the devil. God is not like that. He, he, man, these people were tearing. He, he, he waits until he knows that you really want it. He's all about making sure he doesn't violate your will. God will never violate your will like that in, in, in a way that if you're... I mean, he, 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 he has a respect for the will of man. He, he, the Bible says with loving kindness, have I drawn them? He don't force himself. He draws. He doesn't force. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I say that, man, on the day of Pentecost, you know how they, by the way, they, they tarry for the Holy Ghost. They have to wait on the Holy Ghost. The Lord had to make sure, know that he knew, that he knew, that he knew, that he knew that they really wanted it. That's why they had to wait. He tested them to make sure. The Bible says the Lord tests the hearts of his people, man. He does it. David used to say, test me, O God, and know my heart. Search me, O God, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is... David understood that, man. So, now be careful with that too. I had an experience with that. You know, you don't always want to be asking the Lord every day to test you because He'll do it. <laughs> you know, uh, you can. I just ask Him now to search me and reveal things that need to change. Yeah, it's just, you just gotta, you just gotta pray stuff according to the will of God, man. That's what I learned. Just your will. I don't even want to be asking for stuff that much because I just want you to do what you want to do, not anybody what I want to do. Not my will, but your will be done. Because I don't know what I need. I don't know what is the right way. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man and a way leads to destruction. I'm not trying to go that way. I'm trying to go the right way. The Lord's way, period. End of discussion, as my dad used to say. Bless his soul. He passed away. Um, but my, you know, but anyway, the point is, is this, you know, that's where we're at. Excuse me, I'm going to get a little sip of this here. You know, so I just want to really relay this. The Lord's been very active in this video. I thank God for his grace. He's really empowering me to do, because this is a really important subject, man. Oh man, I'm like on page. Good. So yeah, I'm a, this is actually not going to be too much longer. I don't think this is a longer video than I expected, but it's Okay. Look, I just want to hit on these things. The devil desires to keep you from this. Just really remember that and realize that it's in the Bible. It's biblical and it's true. The tongues of fire. Well, Jeremiah, he, Jesus in the Old Testament, he came when he, the prophet, when in the vision he gave him, he put uh, the coals of fire, the angel, and, the, and he, he gave, put his words in his mouth. Jeremiah. Okay. I think it was Jeremiah or Isaiah. I'm sorry. Don't quote me on that. It was one of the major prophets. Okay, so let's remember that, man. Look, man, let's take all God has for us, okay? Let's not limit ourselves. Speaking in tongues is a gift. It's a gift of God. It's not something that is we should avoid. You know, open the gift and let it you. If God gives, he gives us gifts for reasons that we don't always... 
they always understand. I hopefully we shed some light on the gift of tongues today, but he gives us these gifts to help us in our relationship to him and get to the promised land, man. And that's where I want to go to now, the promised land. Give you an example. I'm going to talk about the promised land. I, I know I talked about the days of Jericho. I mean, uh, yeah, Jericho. Uh, uh, Joshua coming into the promised land, how we're entering into the promised land, how it's a spiritual place now. It's not a physical place. It can be when we go and take dominion in this earth, but it's spiritual also. So the point I'm trying to make is, you know, when Abraham left his father and his mother and went to a land, he says, I will show you the promised land, land that I will tell you of, a land of milk and honey. And with the Israelites, when they left from Moses and Pharaoh and Egypt, they were going to a promised land. The Lord made it very clear that they were going to a new country, a new land of, 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 that was different from the one they were living in, a land that was plenteous in what they needed. You know, a spiritual utopia, I guess you would say. And we know that even in the world, when you go to a new land, you need to be able you to effectively exist in a new society. It is very advantageous that you know the language. <laughs> if you go to another country and you don't know the language, you may be able to get by. A lot of Christians are just getting by. You may be able to point and say, I want that. But there becomes a a time when you, you start to become limited in your ability to access that culture, to access the things that you may need or want or desire, even in interaction and communication with people. You may There's a barrier that's stopping you from accessing what's available because you don't speak the language. I dated a girl. And this girl was from a different country. This is back when I, before I was, you know, when I, before I was, had this commission and was walking with the Lord. And when I, you know, before I was saved in this, you know, and sealed in the spirit, this girl, she spoke a different language. And we had a great relationship. i am be honest with you. I really, you know, in my soul, I believe, I really loved this girl. I loved her. I even thought about marrying her. We were really close and we, we had good communication uh, to a certain degree. We did, but there was a barrier. There was something I experienced. She was from a different country. Her mother tongue was the mother tongue of a different country. It wasn't English. And I noticed and I felt I would see her speak with her family or I see her speak with certain people in that language. And I realized that there was a level of intimacy. There was a level, it was a barrier to our communication because I couldn't talk to her in that language that she knew. Even though we had, she, she spoke English very well. She was very fluent in English and we were able to share and all that. But that still, she, that mother tongue, it's something about a person's mother tongue, you know. She had that mother, you know, and I just, I'd be lost. They'd be talking, I'd be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, so the point I'm trying to make is I was thinking I might marry this girl. And I said, if I, if it gets to that point. I am going to learn that language. And I'm not talking like just kind of know like hola. You know what I'm saying? Like a, I'm it wasn't Spanish, by the way. Uh, but I, it was it was uh, I decided that I was going to be fluent in that language. As fluent as I could be. I wanted to make that language like a mother tongue because I wanted to make I wanted to be able to share in the in that communication with her. In the same way she did with her family. I wanted to experience that with her. You know. And so I had set that in my mind. Obviously I'm not with that girl anymore. That was years ago. But the point I'm trying to say is. In order to truly have a the, the type of deep and intimate relationship with people. And with, with a society that adheres to a certain language. You need to know that language. Is the point I'm trying to make. So God has given us a heavenly language. That he wants us to speak to him. That's only he knows and the angels know. And sometimes just you and him. Be honest with you. Sometimes the angels may, may, may not even know what you're saying. You know. You know. So anyway. The Bible says he speaks mysteries unto God. I'm sure the angels can, you know, they know a lot of it. You know, but whatever. That's a whole different story. But the point I'm trying to make is it's important to speak in tongues, y'all. Let's, let's do it, you know, and 
You know, the devil really hates when we speak in tongues. It, it confounds him. He doesn't understand it. And he knows that there's power and dominion in it. You know, and he's been, look, in the Tower of Babel, when the Lord confounded the languages, <laughs> man, that, that rocked the devil. I mean, that, like, when he, he, he didn't see that. I don't believe he saw that coming. It blindsided him. <laughs> I know that was a hard day for him. When he, when the Lord came, when he had been doing all this stuff and manipulated all these people and they were all building this tower and all the demons and principal, we're going to actually do it. We're going to have our own system here on earth and it's going to be great. And the Lord, and instantly you just like, nope. I know that just, that, that was a bad day for him. I, I guarantee you it was. I guarantee. <laughs> Point I'm trying to make is, is this. The devil, ever since then, he's been desperately trying. If you notice, he's been trying to get everybody to be able to speak one language. It's not a coincidence that English is now in the 21st century, in the 20th century, in the 21st century, became the most, such a widely spoken language. Where if you go to any country, you can most likely, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're probably going to be able to find at least one person and obviously many, many more that speak English is very common. English is the most, I think believe is the most common language in the world. It's not by coincidence that he's trying to do the same thing he did in the Bible, get everybody under one accord, one language, so he can bring about his demonic kingdom. Unity, that he knows that there's power in unity. The Bible talks about they were all on one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. The Bible, Jesus said, a kingdom that is divided against itself cannot stand. we got different languages and different things and different people. You can't even communicate with people. How is your kingdom going to stand? You can't get nothing done because you can't even talk to get it done. Come on, y'all. This is the truth, y'all. So he's been trying to do this for millennia. It's a, it's a trust. Me, it's a monumental task for the devil to get every human being on earth to speak one language again. It's hard. He still hasn't completely done it. I mean, he's getting close. He's trying. He's gotten a lot of pro. I give it to the dude. He got a lot of progress in doing it through the internet and social media and and uh. What's this uh, new, all these apps, Babbel and all this type of stuff. He, you know, he, uh, what's the name? It's a, it's an app where you can like learn languages called Babbel. And you got Rosetta Stone and all this type of stuff. But the point is, uh, and that's just in the 21st century with the internet. But even before then, it was slowly happening through colonization in the different places in Americas. The devil, the Lord, even in Africa, the re how England, how England, how English became such an empire in terms of that language like that, that wasn't just by coincidence that the influence of those languages were became what they are, you know. And we see it in other languages too, French and Spanish. There's a lot of people that speak those languages too. So the major languages, he's doing that to kind of have a soup of communication. And a lot of the people that speak in Europe, a lot of the people that are multilingual, you know, so anyway, I just want to present that. So let's, so if you don't speak in tongues, if you don't have the Holy Spirit and you're on this plan, the salvation, and you want to be able to be triumphant in Christ, I urge you to, you know, search the scriptures. I'm going to put the scriptures up at the end of this video uh, that talk about speaking in tongues. Know it for yourself. Don't do it because I'm saying it. Yeah, I'm speaking in the power and authority of the Holy Spirit right now. I know I am. It's not even a, a, a question about that. But still, do it for yourself. Do your own study. Do your own study. Do your own, uh, you know, uh, study on this. And ask the Lord to reveal the truth of this to you. If there is a stronghold or mental blockage that's stopping you from delving into this. Because it's so important for your life. It will it will be a, a major victory for you if you are able to utilize this gift that the Lord has given us. So, uh, and I want to say this too, your carnal mind will repel this. Don't get me wrong. You guys, oh, this is crazy. The Bible talks about the wisdom of God looking like foolishness to me. The Bible talks about even preaching is something that was considered foolish in that day. And he used that, the what men considered to be foolish 
He used it to, to give some of the most profound wisdom of the universe through something that he said, professing to be wise, they became fools. They became fools because they didn't, they, they thought that those that were wise were fools. So don't be, or they, they repel the truth. So the point is, is this. You're, the devil's going to say, man, you turn it into, a, this is a cult. This is cult stuff. Those crazy Pentecostals. And again, I don't subscribe to, subscribe to a denomination. I don't. I go by the Bible. And I go by the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, the, the gospel, the apostles uh, presented. That's what I live by. I don't I don't subscribe to any denomination. I really don't. Now there are, like I said earlier, there are denominations that are that I believe are more biblically based than others. And so we have that there there's a commonality. And I consider these people to be brothers and sisters in Christ, man. If you it, no, I'm not saying that people aren't saved from a, if you have a denomination. I am definitely not saying that. God forbid. What I'm saying is I just personally don't subscribe to denominations because I see them as divisive. I see them as as being a, a hindrance more than a help. So I have all these different schools of thought. That's what the devil does. The Bible talks about, I mean, we know even in history that divide and conquer. That's the strategy of, of enemies. And the devil's been trying to do that. He's been trying to compartmentalize and keep, you go, on, you, go you drive down the street, you got seven churches on one block sometimes and not and not one pastor knows each other. Not they don't even talk or mingle with each other because they're different denominations or even the same denomination, but they don't intermingle. That's that's, that's of the devil. That is of the devil, man. The devil strategically does that. He the Bible Jesus talked about that you split a hair and swallow a camel, and that's very rampant in the church. Taking little things and let one little thing stops you from believing in somebody that believes in the same Jesus as you. But yet because they eat pork or they uh, don't believe in because uh, they're they they wear a certain hairstyle or all these little things, man. These things that the Lord uh, judging people according to the flesh and all this mess. Now there's holiness and righteousness. There's a purity in which you should dress and, and conduct yourself and not go into lewd things. But the devil legalism, man. This legalist spirit that's present in the church is of the devil. I promise you, it's of the devil. Not the way, man, they did away with the law, man. Jesus, man, let's get rid of that stuff, man. Let's just walk by faith. Now, if you if, if somebody offends you, if, if you know that you are doing something that you can do without that isn't doctrinal and you offending someone, like, a, like let's say someone's faith, let's say if I went to a church and their church said, I remember this was a really amazing illustration. My grandfather passed away a great, powerful man of God. That the Lord, you know, I thank God he gave me a blessing before he died on that death. But I really believe that he was a powerful man of God. Uh, he, he had a church. Anyway, he passed away. But anyway, it was a really interesting moment that happened to me when I was a kid. Uh, 107. I think I'm going to end the video after. Yeah, I'm going to end the video after I give this, 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 uh, this story here. I was at church one Sunday and this man came and preached and I didn't know really know who he was. And when he was preaching, he was, he came in with this like legalist attitude. He was very legalist. He was like, you don't do, he even said some crazy stuff. Like we don't believe in going to family reunions and that's wrong and of the devil and this and that. And we don't do this and we don't do that. And this is wrong. And I, and I'm like, this it was all, a lot of this stuff was new stuff to me. And I remember I was, I was a small child. And I remember I was laying my head on my grandmother's lap. I was, it was morning time, Sunday, I was tired. So I, and she used to, you know, bounce her leg. And, and, and it was funny, my grandmother being, the, you know, the loving, nurture person that she is. She was literally, she knew that it was false doctrine being spewed over the, she knew that it was wrong. It wasn't the guy what was going on. And she literally was like putting her hand over my ears while I had my head down. But being me, being the curious me, I was, my, I was perked. My ears were open trying to take in everything. But so, she, you know, and I'm, and I would raise man and be like, you know, I called my grandmother Grammy at the time. I said, Grammy, it's wrong to have family reunions. And she was like, it's okay, Rick, just, you know, she, or whatever she said to, to get me to not pay attention to what was being said. Anyway, the point is I'm trying to make is this guy was saying all this legalist stuff. And 
my grandfather being the powerful man of God that he was, he's, he even told us later that he almost pulled this man's coattail. And that's like a big no-no. Like you, from what I hear in the church, like you don't really pull somebody's coattail, you know, unless they just really trip it. And he almost did it. But my grandfather held his peace, but he did something that was amazing. This was a really powerful example to me of how you deal with things in righteousness. He stood up. And I forget exactly what he said. I was probably like seven or something or less, you know, but he was like, he acknowledged what he said with dignity. And he, he publicly stated that he didn't agree with what he was saying and that it wasn't doctrine. It wasn't of God. And he said it in front of his flock. He said it in front of his his members that it came with him. It was like an amen corner. Everything this guy said, all his church was like, amen, yeah, pastor. So he, he stood up in front of all of them and was like, we don't we don't subscribe. And one thing he said, the guy said, it's wrong for a, a pastor to wear a preaching collar, like one of those collars you see. And my grandfather had on a collar. And he was like, well, I'll tell you what, in order not to offend you, since you... This is a stumbling block for you. Pretty much is what he was saying. I'm going to publicly take off my collar out of respect to not cause you to stumble. You being my brother in Christ. But he made it, he let it know that But when you leave, <laughs> you putting that collar right back on. <laughs> he let him know it, man. So the point I'm trying to make, let's not this legalist stuff, man. And my grandmother corrected all the false doctrine. No, that's, you know, this other devil, you know, it's okay. Don't worry. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that, that guy, he was on some type of weird mission. This guy came in trying to cause division in our church and question Bible and faith and stuff. No, it was of the devil. He may not, he might have really believed that stuff. I'm not saying that everybody that has legalist attitudes are of, of the devil. They're being manipulated and used. I talked about in other videos that, Either you're submitting to God. That's why you got to know the word. You got to know the word, man. You got to know the word. Man, when I was in the hospital, let me give you a tip. I'm going to show you how important it is to know the word of God. I was in the hospital for, when I first got, when I first got delivered, I was in the hospital for like six weeks. I came and repented and came to the Lord, I think the second day I was there. So I had about six weeks or so of just being in the hospital. When I got delivered and gave my life and wrote out my covenant with the Lord, I don't think I put, he made it very clear that this was going to be my life. This Bible, and I, I sort of, I, I, man, I hounded those nurses to get me a Bible because the, the hospital I was in, they, I didn't hound them, but I asked them several times. They thought it was funny. They were making fun of me, man. <laughs> like, you know, because I was asking for a Bible and jest. They were, you know, but anyway, the point is this. I got that Bible. I would say out of six months in that, I don't think I had that TV. I may have had the TV on and watched the news once. I spent every day, all day reading the Bible or praying. The Lord gave me that. And he said, this is what you got. This No TV. I was praying, meditating. I was doing something spiritual the entire time. They, they used to make, man, are you going to stop? One time this nurse came and said, when are you going to stop reading the Bible? Are you done yet? I said, I'll never be done. <laughs> Jeez. So I'm just saying, like, because I, I had the revelation that this word is life. Literally, this is life. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Lord gave me a revelation that this word is, is, is the foundational principle for eternal life in me. And uh, by his grace and mercy through the Lord Jesus. So the living word. So that's the thing, man. So. I don't even know why I went into that, but the point I'm trying to say is let's not deny the word of God, man. Let's not deny the word of God. Let's not. And you know what's funny? Some of them same nurses, after I started getting the word in me, I tell you, this is the honest truth. Man, 
after about some weeks of of just ingesting the word and, and praying to God and asking for his grace and mercy, when he started giving me revelation and stuff and his spirit started coming into the room and his presence started to manifest in my life slowly, them same nurses was coming in and, and I was counseling. I'm sure they stood up. I'm like, why is this person? Man, these nurses were coming in. I'm talking to these nurses, man. They talking about God and Jesus and telling me their secrets and not secrets like that, like crazy, un bad stuff. But I'm saying like they were telling me their issues and problems and and trying to get direction and, and soapboxing and and therapy stuff. And I'm like, I'm a why is these people talking to me? I'm the last person in the world you should be coming to for advice in your life. I'm a drug addict that's in here for a blood clot because I was shooting heroin. <laughs> why do you? What who, what can I offer? You know what I'm saying? I'm the last person you be talking to, but it was because it wasn't me. It was the word they sensed that the Lord was dealing in my life, and they 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 probably sensed that I had a connection to God, and they wanted to that something. The Holy Spirit drew them to that, and a lot of times I didn't even have to talk. They would just the Lord, Holy Spirit would just do all the work. I'd just be sitting there listening to them, and they would, and the Holy Spirit they they figure out their problems themselves. You know what I'm saying? By the Holy Ghost working in their heart because they open themselves up, you know, or sometimes the Lord did give me things to say to people and encourage them and stuff. And I'm sure, I mean, one time that was a doctor, man. <laughs> That's how the Lord worked, man. Look, I'm not trying to make this weird or racial or nothing, but look, I'm, I'm obviously a black man. I'm a young guy. I was a drug addict, homeless drug addict. And I had a doctor, man. And one of the I got transferred to another hospital. This guy would sit and he'd come and tell me my like daily things. And then he'd just stand in the doorway and just like we'd be talking sometimes. But then he would just like stand in the doorway and just I would be talking about God and stuff to him. And he would just sit and listen. Like and and I was just coming out of me, like, cause I've been reading the words so much and stuff, talking about like the worldview and philosophy and stuff, and we're just talking and stuff. And it would be weird. We'd be talking and we'd have this. I'd finish the sentence and I think it was done. I'm, I'm thinking, okay, you're going to leave and go to the next patient and do whatever you're going to And he'd just stand there and linger. So I'd be like, it was kind of awkward sometimes. I'd be like, I guess I'll just keep talking. So I just kept talking about the Lord. And this dude, I mean, he would come faithfully and like sit and have these conversations with me. And I'd talk about stuff. And he just listened. I was like, what could this doctor have? What could he possibly, what could I possibly offer this man? He's a doctor. He's a uh, 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 you know, I'm a, I'm a young black heroin addict in Chicago that's homeless. What could I possibly be saying that's valuable to him? Nothing. I would assume that someone in, on the surface, you would think that he would literally want to minimize it, have the least communication that he could have with me to get to the next patient. There's nothing I could, in my mind, that's how I'm thinking, like, why is this guy... But it wasn't me. It was because the word was starting to become alive in my life and something about the truth, man. Like you, you people are hearing this right now, they know I'm speaking the truth. You don't gotta, you know, it's the truth. The truth will make you free and he wanted freedom. And I remember this guy came and I was reading the Bible and the devil tried to use this guy to bring me these philosophy. He was trying to like, he brought me like, what's the name of that book? He brought me some books. Anyway, I can't remember, but the Lord laid on my heart we this guy was don't get me he was a nice guy man you know obviously i'm not gonna say his name i remember the doctor's name but he was a really cool that guy i thought he was cool a little you know kind of strange a little bit but he was cool and he came and we were talking one evening and the lord I, and i knew i was going to be leaving the hospital soon this is toward the end of my time in the hospital and I was like, Lord, this guy's going to come. You know, we have these like evening conversations all the time. And I'm like, give me something to say to him, to lead him to you, to show him the truth. Like, I mean, obviously we got a rapport. You know, what can what can I say, man? Little me, just give me something. And he gave me that he wanted me to, to challenge because and this is how the Lord works. The guy came one day to give me these books. They were these cynical, really like I, I like skim through the books he gave me. They were like these books. I, I wish I could think of the author. He's a he's kind of a famous author, but he's of like a nihilist. He's a he has a very pessimistic view of reality and society, and he was really cynical and and sarcastic about God and religion. He was kind of like a, what's that one comedian? Uh, 
Actually, one of my old roommates from college loved this guy, George or something. George, he died. He's a white-haired guy. Um, I think his first name, George Carlin. George Carlin, yeah. He kind of had that kind of vibe, this this author he gave me. I guess he was trying to like recruit me into unbelief or something. I don't know. Or a cynical perspective of reality. It obviously didn't work, but... uh. So, but it was cool that he did that because it opened up without being condescending. Because if I, come on, man, if you're just a lay person like me, you know, this guy has like a doctorate degree. I just have a bachelor's degree or whatever in arts. You know what I'm saying? So if I go and say, hey, man, I, I think it's something you can learn in this, like, present him a book. It's it's kind of like, not condescending, but it's like, I'm not in a position to really offer you knowledge like that. In the world's perspective, in terms of what can be offered, you know what I'm saying? In the pride of the world. So it was awesome that he offered me those books because then it gave me license to offer something to him from my perspective. You see what I'm saying? It like kind of made it not as harsh or kind of condescending for me to like present an idea to him since he presented one to me. So I was like, Lord, and he said, tell him to read Ecclesiastes. And I was like, Okay. So the last time, the last day, I believe it was the last day when he left, I said, I made it, I gave him the recommendation to read Ecclesiastes. And if you know, Ecclesiastes is about chasing after the wind, about how nothing in this world can fulfill, how you can search and do all these things and gain knowledge and wisdom and have experiences and go on trips and spend money and get married and have sex and jump off cliffs and you can do whatever you want. You can do this and that and change, do whatever, all this stuff. It all really amounts to nothing because at the end of the day, the meaning of life is to, is to fear God and keep his commandments. That's what Solomon, the wisest man to ever live other than the Lord Jesus Christ, came to that conclusion that after all of the living he did as king, he had access to anything he wanted. At the end of the day, he found in his old age that the only thing that matters was to Fear God and keep his commandments. And that's what he told me to give to that doctor. So anyway, you know, it's a commandment for us to open ourselves up to the Lord so that he can bless our lives and give us the fruit of the spirit, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And the, the gift of tongues is a powerful and true way that the Lord has given us. And I say the gift of I'm about this, the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues. I'm going to say it like that. Because there is the gift of tongues. I got to tell you, this. you got the gift of tongues. And then you have the evidence of speaking in tongues that is the sign that you have the spirit of God dwelling in you permanently. Okay, like, you know, dwelling in your body. So the point I'm trying to say is, is this. The gift of tongues is like diverse tongues is when you can someone that has a gift or they speak in, they have a it's kind of like a uh, diverse tongues is like. Some of us have the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues where they can speak in tongues on a I would say, how do I explain this in a maybe a more in a deeper level, maybe, you know, than the average Christian. And I will say this, I believe I've always, I, you know, it's a gift. I, I believe that this, the gift of tongue, the Holy Spirit is the one that leads you to do it. But I've always noticed in my prayer life that it's kind of something that just can be done. Once you do it, it becomes like anything, like a language. You, you don't have to like, you can just do it anytime you want to. I mean, it's not something you got to like wait. Well, you already receive it. It's a gift. Once you have something, you you deal with it whenever you want. You don't have to say. Now, it's different. Uh, now, the other gifts, you have to be moved on by the Holy Spirit. Usually, I believe. But when it comes to tongues, you can speak in tongues whenever you want to. I know I do. And it's and it ain't me. It is the Lord. I can tell. So anyway, uh, let's do that, y'all. So I'm going to end the video. We're at an hour and 23 minutes. This video was a little longer. I've been seeking ever since I did those expose videos. Uh, by the, by, thank God, I, the, the, the videos have been under an hour each time. I think one was like 46 minutes. I think one was like in the thirties, maybe, 
maybe one was close to an hour, like 50 something minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to keep these videos under an hour. You know, people got lives and stuff. This stuff is important, though, and I want to, uh, you know, present this information in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a beneficial and systematic way that can really be of help to people, uh, believers and unbelievers, like I always say. So, again, this video went a little long because this is so important. This is important. And I knew it was going to go like this. The Lord made it very clear. He said, man, I'm going to manifest today. With it. I mean, he manifests every time, but he really told me he's going to really throw some stuff down today because uh, this is he really this is uh, this is the Lord's heart. This is his heart. He wants his people to walk in the spirit, to speak in tongues because he knows that it's going to be it's going to give them an advantage against the devil. And especially in this way, we have to be able to build up our, ourselves speaking in the most holy faith, praying in the spirit. It's a scripture. So. It's really important. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than ye all. And look at who, look at what, look how Paul was. He knew it was something to speak. He said, I do it more than any of you. I can, he can, he's like, I, trust me. I see how important it is. I can confidently say, I probably do it more than every single one of you. And he did. I'm sure he did. Look at Paul. I mean, come on. Man wrote like, I don't know what, over 50%, more than 50% of the New Testament. I believe something like that. So. Yeah, so let's end with prayer. Uh, Father, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, God, we honor you today and we thank you for your revelation, understanding, wisdom, power, authority, and insight that you have provided your people today. Thank you for using me, your humble servant, that is nothing in comparison to you and only as a conduit for you. God, I seek to be a vessel of honor, not just a vessel of clay, you know, whatever. You know, I'll fit for your your use, Lord God. So I thank you for showing up today and sh and uh, speaking to your people. I pray that you allow this word, God, to touch the hearts of those that have strongholds and, and things that are preventing them from adequately receiving your truths, Lord God, in your blessed word. Oh, God, let your word penetrate their heart and do its perfect work. In Jesus' name, we pray that you... Work on their minds, renew their minds, wash their minds with your Holy Spirit so that they may be able to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Help them to understand the power of praying in the spirit, praying in tongues as the spirit of God gives them utterance, the Lord Jesus Christ. Show them this, show them. And we, we come against every demonic attack, every witch, warlock, any type of demonic activity that will try to stifle this truth or try to bring some type of false, deceptive spiritual manifestation in their life that is contrary to your spirit. We bind and we cancel every retaliated, every retaliatory spirit and every spirit of confusion and distress over this message, God. We bind and shut it down in the spirit realm right now by the power of the Holy Ghost, the sword of the spirit. And I pray right now that everybody listening to this message, that they have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, their feet shod with the readiness of the preparation of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And I pray right now, in the name of Jesus. Anybody that's watching this right now, if your heart is ready to receive, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. If you this has touched your heart, raise your hands right now. And as the sound of my voice, the Holy Spirit will begin. Oh, Shabahakando will manifest itself where you are right now. And many of you will begin to speak in other tongues right now in Jesus' name. Father, send your spirit into every home, oh God. Wherever they are, God, deal with them. Yes, Lord. Angels being dispensed in homes right now, pricking hearts. Oh, God, people are being delivered. They're being healed. There is no space in the spirit. Don't believe that lie. The Lord lives in eternal. He is God over time and space. Do not let the dislocation or the fact that this is happening at a later time stop your blessing. This is eternal truth. 
that it will stand and reign in life forever. Receive the spirit of the Holy Ghost. People are being healed right now. People are being delivered. The Lord told me this was going to happen when I was preparing this. Hallelujah. I feel his presence strongly. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. Oh, let's just clap our hands. Everybody clap your hands. Raise your hands. Thank God for his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is in this temple. The Lord is in this temple. Whatever you need is here. Hallelujah. His presence surrounds me and us. His spirit saturates us. Whatever you need is here. The Lord is in this place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, he is. The Lord is in this place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, he is. His presence surrounds me. His spirit saturates me. The Lord, whatever you need, is there. His presence surrounds you. His spirit saturates you. Whatever you need is there. The Lord is in that place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is in that place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive his manifest presence in your life. Bask in the glory. Walk in righteousness. Walk in truth. Let the power of the Holy Spirit consume your life. Oh, Koshaba, his, his, his spirit is a consuming fire. Consume the flesh. Consume Anything in you that's not like them, Father, put them on a path of righteousness. Let them be led in by the Spirit, that they will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Help them to die to the flesh and come alive to your Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Oh God, baby, make this sense of the whole shit, send the rebe, he need a mahaka ho show. Oh God, Rabba Hassan, the rebe, who so put the rende, the rebe, his team, the rebe, his show, costu, colia, the rebe, Oh God, you're worthy, Father. Oh shit, the rebe, his tiki, the rebe, his Oh God, ha, your rohus to kuma. Ha, I'm oh Lord, you're working, oh God. Ha, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. This could go on for hours, so we're going to stop this right now. I'm not, I'm not quenching the spirit, y'all, but... I want to see what the Lord wants to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We're going to pray, Father. Just, oh, yes, yes. Against those retaliatory spirits, we're just going to thank you. In the name of Jesus, for every demonic spirit, those mental strongholds are being broken. 
We thank you that you're delivering people from uh, generational doctrines of devils that have tried to stifle their, their, their ability to function in the reality of your grace. Oh God, we, we thank you for destroying those yokes and burdens and bondages in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, he's still here. He's still in there. Uh, I think he's lifting a little bit. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope this, this video has been a blessing to you. I hope this video has encouraged you to believe in the word of God, to know that it is authoritative. It is timeless. And those of you that have received the Holy Spirit, you speak to the Lord. Uh, those of you that, that received it watching this, uh, you're like, man, this stuff is real. I already know what's going on in your mind. Uh, so just, yeah, it's real, y'all. <laughs> God is real. All right. So, yeah, believe that. And I'm looking forward to that. We're going to do another video on baptism. Get in the word of God. Ask him for revelation. Ask him for guidance. Uh, and... You know, get yourself in a Bible believing church. The Lord will lead you if you ask him with a sincere heart. He'll get you to where you need. No matter. I don't care if you're in Zimbabwe. I don't care if you're in Tanzania. I don't care if you're in France. I don't care if you're in Portugal. I don't care if you're in Switzerland. He will lead you to where you need to be. He's a faithful God and he wants to save you and keep you. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is a keeper, y'all. He will keep you in the faith. So, again, this is Derek Cooper with BHO Ministries. I'm so thankful that you have joined me today to, for this ministry the broadcast and i ask that you uh walk in the light as he is in the light and the blood of jesus will cleanse you of all of your sins and show you the truth be blessed in the name of the lord jesus as i always say i love you but jesus christ truly loves you infinitely more this is Derek cooper with bhl ministries have a blessed day